In today's note, we're going to be solving linear systems um, by reviewing everything we've done uh, in our past couple notes. So we're going to be looking at the three methods, graphing, substitution, and elimination. Again, remember that when we're trying to solve linear systems, what that means is we're trying to find the point of intersection. So again, remember the point of intersection is where the two lines meet or where they cross or it's the POI, which again was an X and a Y coordinate. So we're gonna look at two methods. We're gonna look at solving by graphing and then solving, or so, all oh, three methods, sorry, graphing, substitution, and elimination. So we're gonna start with graphing. We're gonna start off the easiest one. Y equals negative two X plus one. Just rewriting the equations to make it easier. y equals x plus 5. So there are my two equations. Again, the key things when I'm graphing, I need to look for two things. First, my slope, which in this case is negative 2, as well as 1, because I don't see an actual value there. So it has to be an invisible 1. And secondly, I have my y-intercept. So 1 and 5. I might also, it would help to remember that slope equals rise over run. Again, remembering from back in our first unit. So if I'm going to graph my first equation, I'm going to start off at the y-intercept and put a point there. So I'm going to put a point at plus 1. It will be helpful. Remember our slope, anytime there's a whole number, it's always over 1. So in this case, our slope is negative 2 over 1. So that means to the right one, down two, and I continue that pattern to the right one, down two. If I want to go backwards to extend my line in the other direction, I go up two to the left one and just reverse that. Once that's done, I can now graph or draw a straight, straight line through those points, and that is my first equation. I can do the same thing with my second equation. I'm going to start at the y-intercept of 5. Remember that our slope, if it's a whole number, is over 1. So our slope is actually 1 over 1. So write 1 up 1, write 1 up 1, and so on, and plot those points. And if I reverse it, it is down 1 to the left 1. And I can draw a straight line through all these points to make my second line. From this, I can see where they cross. It is not a nice point, but I can still roughly estimate where it's crossing. So I know the point of the intersection we could roughly say is negative 1.5 and 3.5. Again, it'll be OK if we're a little bit off because we are estimating where it is. So again, our point of intersection we found is negative 1.5, 3.5 by graphing. If we're solving by substitution, remember substitution means we have to sub one equation into the other. So we take one equation, substitute it into the other. Again, I'm just going to rewrite our equations. 1 and 2. y equals negative 2x plus 1. y equals 1x plus 5. Now the nice thing here is that our equations have already been isolated or arranged so that they already have one variable isolated, in this case y. So what that means is that I can take the value of one equation and replace y with another. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take equation 1 and plug it into equation 2. So what that means is because equation 1 states that y equals negative 2x plus 1, I can take this, uh, these terms that I've high, or circled and replace the y in the second equation with it. So in the end, I will get negative 2x plus 1 
equals 1x plus 5. And now what I have to do is solve by or solve my equation for x. So I want to get the x's on one side. So I need to minus x from the one side, minus x from the other. They cancel out. I'm left with negative 3x plus 1 equals 5. I want to cancel out the 1's by subtracting 1, minus 1 on the other side as well. They cancel out, and I'm left with negative 3x equals 4. I'm going to divide by negative 3, divide by negative 3 to get x by itself. They cancel out on one side, and I'm left with x equals 1.3. So again, remember our goal is to find the point of intersection. Sorry, not 1.3, negative 1.3. Don't forget the negative sign. It will change your answer. So the point of intersection is two parts. The first part was negative 1.3. Now I need to find the second part. Again, remember the second part was we had to, so we had to take our value and substitute it back in. So luckily they're already, each equation is fine. It doesn't matter which one we use. So we use the first one, negative two X plus one. So Y equals negative two times negative 1.3 plus one. Y equals 2.6 plus one. And Y equals 3.6 in the end. So that means my point of intersection has a second value of 3.6. So we can see that we're a little bit more precise using substitution because we're dealing just with numbers. Realistically, we would be just as precise if we were graphing if our scale was a little bit smaller so we could see those decimal numbers. But unfortunately, because it's not, we're not going to be as precise. And that's where using the equations can come into play or where they're more beneficial to know these other methods. It, depending on what we're looking at, it may be, we may need to know those actual decimal places. So we're going to try our last one by elimination. So if we sub elimination, we remember was add or subtract the equations. So that was the goal of elimination was add or subtract. get one variable by itself. So again, we're starting off with our two equations, y equals negative 2x plus 1, y equals 1x plus 5. So looking at these two equations, we know we're going to have to either add or subtract, but first we need to look at our variables. Looking at the x's, the, the numbers in front aren't the same, so I can't cancel those out by elimination without having to change them. But if I look at the y's again, it's nicely laid out. I can get rid of the y's because the number in front is the same. And if we review back to our previous notes on solving by elimination, that is the goal. We want to get the numbers in front of one of the letters to be the same. That way we can add or subtract them to get rid of them. In this case, the sign is both positive one, which means we have to subtract our two equations. So y minus y is zero, zero y or just zero, equal signs falls in place. Negative two minus one is negative three x. One minus five is negative four. So I'm left with zero equals negative three x minus four. If I wanna get x by itself, I need to move this separate term. So I'm gonna move the minus four I'm going to add 4 to both sides. One side cancels out. With a 4 equals negative 3x. I'm going to divide both sides by negative 3. One side cancels out. And I get x equals negative 1.3. So I can already see that I'm headed into the right step right path because I have the same point of intersection as my last one. So negative 1.3 was the x value, which I got in the last one as well. 
but let's still go through and continue the steps. The next step, we're doing the exact same thing. Once we found our x value, we plug that back into an equation, one of our two starting ones, and find the other variable. I'm going to use the second equation this time, so y equals 1x plus 5. Get y equals 1 times negative 1.3 plus 5, and I get y equals negative 1.3 plus 5. I get y equals 3.7. So y equals 3.7. So while it may look that we're not quite there because we're at 3.7 and 3.6, we have to keep in mind that we did round our numbers. So we did round our x value, so that will change this slightly. If we kept the full x value, which happened to be negative 1.3 repeating, or if we used the fraction 4 over negative 3 and carried that through, we would get the same answer in both steps. We are going to check, though. Um, again, it's going to be slightly off because we do have to keep in mind that we are rounding. But we are going to still check our answer. So y equals negative 2x plus 1 for my first equation. My second one is y equals 1x plus 5. And we have to remember that our point of intersection will go with the first one, negative 1.3. 3.6. Again, we're going to keep in mind that as long as we're close within decimal places, we will be fine in this case. So y is 3.6 equals negative 2 times negative 1.3 plus 1. 3.6 equals 2.6 plus 1. 3.6 equals 3.6. So it does work for equation one. Equation two, let's check. So y equals one, or y equals 3.6 equals one times three point, sorry, one times negative 1.3 plus five. So again, all I did was substitute the points in. 3.6 equals negative 1.3 plus five. 3.6 equals 3.7. So again, because I know that that's the rounding error, um, we can say that these are both correct. Let's put a little mark down here and just say rounding error. But we do have the correct answers in both cases. So this is how we can solve a linear system using the three methods, whether it is solving by, there we go, Solving by graphing, where we graph our two lines. Solving by substitution, where we substitute one equation into another. Or solving by elimination, where we add or subtract the two equations. We will still get the same answers in the end. The accuracy of it will depend. The equations will be more accurate. So substitution and elimination are more accurate than solving by graphing, depending on what our scale is. Um, but in the end, we will have roughly the same um, the same, approximately the same answer, uh, give, or, give or take a couple decimal places, depending on what equations we actually have.